Hey guys, we have a MacBook MacBook Pro here. It's an A1706. Um, I already have the bottom panel pulled. Uh, this machine has no signs of life. Corrosion all over the main board by the looks of it. Um, so switch to the overhead camera view. So yeah, this MacBook. No signs of life. We have the bottom panel pulled here. You can see obvious corrosion in multiple sections of the board. So the first thing we're going to do here is just pull the board out of the housing. All right, we got the board pulled from the housing here. Uh, check the back side. Doesn't look like we have any corrosion on the back side of the board. Let's take a look under the microscope. All right, we're gonna start with a visual inspection throughout the main board here. So starting at the top left corner, we could see some corrosion near the charge port connector and near the CD3215. Water damage indicator is red. Got some corrosion down here as well. I've got some here. Looks like that's everything on the top side of the board. This side of the board looks good. There's no water damage indicator over here. Everything looks good on that side. Taking the back side of the board here. No real corrosion, just a bit dirty. I'm going to pull the uh, heat sink off here just so we could check beneath it if we have any corrosion hiding. Just clean that off. Looks good. And we got that corrosion here. Looks good. I'm going to put the heat sink back on now. Alright, I'm just going to do a quick clean on the bottom side of the board here. Got some ugly looking resistors over here. So the two that are not looking good, they're supposed to be 3.3 kilo ohm resistors. Let's test them. That one's good. This one is not good. What we're going to do is replace all three of these anyway. You can see beneath the resistor it's burnt. We actually are missing the connection. Here. I'm going to remove this chip as well. Alright, now we have to reconnect this line that is damaged. We take a look at the board view over here. We have to connect uh, from here to here to here because we've lost the connection at pin one of our B091. So let's fix it up here.
we've added a pillow of solder to each of those points. Now we can run our jumper. All right, we have a jumper line in place here. Start by connecting it on this end. Connect it there. And we're going to connect to the resistor. Okay, and then we're going to connect right on here. And we can clean it off and check continuity. All right, now we can check continuity uh, from are we checking continuity from, from this cap to this resistor? And if we have continuity between those two points, we know that it uh, was a successful jumper. So let's check here to here. So we have good continuity there. So looks like we're good. So we're charging at five volts. like we have some kind of short so we're not getting our 20 volts and it seems like it's pulling um, 0.25 amps right away and it's I think it's getting warm on this side Let's test that again so we have some kind of short on this side of the board I'm gonna grab the thermal camera so if we look here, we can see our CD3215 chip is, uh, is lighting up as soon as we plug in power. So it was, uh, we got a short somewhere there. Let's switch back to the overhead view here. Take a closer look at our CD3215. All right, let's take measurements around the chip. We found a short right here on this cap. So this cap right here, short to ground. Well, we don't know if it's a cap yet, but that's where we measure a short. So let's switch back over to the um, board view. Uh, so here's our chip and here's the cap. So PP3V3 UPC TVLDO. So, um, connects to this resistor here and to here. I'm going to start by, uh, I'm just going to remove this cap and see if it relieves our short. All right, with that cap removed, let's test. So it looks like that cap was the problem. Let's, uh, Install a new one in its place here. It's good, and we can now test again for 20 volts. So we're getting 20 volts in regular amperage draw. All right, we have everything connected. Let's turn it around here. Open it up and test it out. All right, so it boots, but we're getting a question mark on the screen. So let's try booting into a recovery mode here. All right, so unfortunately, we are not detecting the SSD on this machine. What's this? So we have a corroded test point. So that line is PPVN 2V2 NAND. Yeah, this, uh, this test point is corroded, burnt away. So we've lost connection from this side to this side. All right, 
right, so when I test here, I should get the 0 0.4. I do. Here I get 0. And we have no connection um, from this side to this side. Right here. So, so we lost uh, this point completely. Uh, so we have to run a jumper to repair that trace. We've tinned both ends and now we can install our jumper line here. Looks good. Looks good. We got continuity. It's good. So check this resistor. This resistor is not testing too good, so I'm gonna remove it. Alright, so we've installed our jumper. This is testing good. We're about ready to test this device. So, given the damage we're seeing on this side of the board, here directly so we can see all these burnt caps that means like so on the back side of the board here the exact side we have the U9300 chip um, so all that uh, so this chip could very well have been affected that could be another part of our issue here if we check the board view we can see that it connects directly beneath where we had all the damage on this section and does have to do with SSD functions. So we start by just pulling the chip and checking beneath it. See if we have any burnt pads or anything like that. Pads look okay. We're still gonna Go ahead and replace this chip to be safe. Alright, now we're going to pull this chip from a known good donor board.
All right, we have our new chip installed here. Let's get this board into the housing so we can test it out. And now we're just waiting for the machine to boot up. See if we have SSD and detection. All right, so the machine booted right up. So this computer is fully repaired. I'm gonna switch over to the board view here so we can run a recap. So this MacBook A1706 820-00923-A board came in water damage with no signs of life. We started by doing a visual inspection of the board and noticed corrosion in multiple areas, specifically here and here. Uh, we started by fixing the charging circuit. Uh, we identified a broken trace here on RB091, which we repaired, and a shorted cap on CB408. So that solved the entire charging and power issue, uh, but then we were booting with a question mark, which meant the machine wasn't detecting the NAND, the SSD. Uh, so in this area of the board, we found that we had a blown test point here. This trace was damaged and broken. Uh, this is actually a common issue on the A1706 with water damage. So we repaired this trace, replaced this resistor, which wasn't looking good. Um, and still we were not getting uh, any NAND detection after repairing this line. So we saw that there was um, some burnt caps and you know something happened in this area and everything connects uh, on the other side of the board to U9300. So we replaced U9300 and that restored our NAND uh, circuit and the machine booted up normally and was able to identify the SSD NAND and that solved the issue. Uh, so this MacBook is fully repaired. We'll get it uh, assembled and back to the customer. Thanks for watching.